I'm Dr. Joe Hiblin, and I'm a psychiatrist and a nutritional neuroscientist. I worked for 28 years at the National Institutes of Health. There's been, I think, almost a great hysteria about toxicity of mercury and seafood. So one of the great scientific questions has been, how is it possible that you know, mercury in very exquisitely low concentrations in any biological system can actually cause neurological toxicity. It's there in profoundly minute amounts. There has to be something that amplifies the mercury. It doesn't produce enough free radicals itself to cause any damage. And Nick Ralston has contributed to our understanding about the role of really why mercury should be toxic. Nick Ralston as others have really shown what mercury does is it binds to selenium and pulls the selenium out of the tissues and makes the selenium inactive. And the selenium then is no longer present in what we call selenium dependent enzymes. And so the enzyme doesn't work. And the reason that that's so important is that the selenium enzymes gobble up all the free radicals and gobble up all the rust and toxicity that's produced in the body. And so when mercury pulls the selenium out of this enzyme, the body has no way to protect itself from all this toxicity and all of this um, free radicals. Free radicals cause aging, they cause neurological damage. So it's not really the mercury that's causing the toxicity. It's because mercury causes a selenium deficiency. In the study that is often quoted for women eating something from the sea and having problems with their babies, that was in the Faroe Islands where women were eating pilot whale, which is a mammal and nobody eats in the US. And it just so happens that the pilot whales have very low selenium and higher mercury. So those women probably got a little bit selenium deficient. And even then the magnitude of effect was very subtle. It was really just a couple of points on this thing called the Boston naming test. And then the safety factors and uncertainty factors, I think, were completely overblown. This is in stark contrast to the levels of selenium in seafood, which people normally eat commercially. And in most, almost every fish from the sea, there is a higher level of selenium than there is mercury, often many fold excess. So the selenium never gets pulled out of the selenium-dependent enzymes, and there's really no toxicity and nothing evident, which is why women can eat fish breakfast, noon, and night, and only have better improvements for their babies, because there's virtually no toxicity from mercury, because probably mercury is causing a selenium deficiency, and you can't cause a selenium deficiency when you're eating selenium-rich fish. So amounts matter. In women eating normative levels of seafood, there is no harm of eating seafood in pregnancy. There is only benefit. Ill-informed public dietary advice was to avoid mercury at all costs. And I think that they inadvertently have been creating nutritional deficiencies that have far worse implications. If women obey the dietary guidelines now, and eat no more than 12 ounces of seafood per week, it does the harm that it intended to prevent because it causes a nutritional deficiency in their baby's brains because they're not getting enough omega-3 and seafood nutrients and it causes the harm it intends to prevent. And I think that this is a travesty of science and policy and I'm glad that the National Academy of Sciences is looking into the data to reverse this as is the WHO and FAO. And I am absolutely convinced that if they follow the data and follow, instead of the hysteria, we will have improved dietary advice.